This is Jordan Tower with JT News. Smash that like button and hit that subscribe button. I appreciate you guys. I hope you're having a good Thursday. Okay, let's get right into it. We got Nicki Minaj. She's going off on everybody, okay? And I'm going to read it just like how she would say it, okay? Because she is mad. Somebody is challenging her pen once again. And she wants <laughs> she wants to make set the record straight. Now, she, now just real quick, uh, if you didn't check my video yesterday, you know, a lot of people were making fun of her twerking in the video. She looks good in the video. But yes, Meg Thee Stallion did out twerk her, but you know, whatever. Okay, so anyways, let's just get right into it. So she said a blogger DM'd and said artists with ghostwriters put out songs that made him feel like he knew who they were, but he didn't feel he knew who I was based on my music. First song on my first album, I'm the best. I wrote that. Autobiography, all things go. Pills and potions, clown. And she says, I can list 100 more songs. I won't. Just letting y'all in the dumb ish. These so-called hip hop heads, she puts in quotes, actually have the bows to say to me, ganja burn, nip tuck, come see about me. Boy, move around, please. Just say you're not a fan. My fans know exactly who I am, love. And she says, then someone uh, replies to Nikki and says, Can anybody hear me? Still I rise, dear old Nikki. The crying game, grand piano, nip tuck, regretting your tears. Man, don't get me started. Look at the material clowns. Nikki says, Save Me was literally on my debut album too. I wrote that, man, if you don't get out of here, crying face emoji. And he kept hitting me like he had something groundbreaking to say. I opened the message and I was just looking like, Huh? The whole time. The next album would be written by a man, so these men can get to know me. What? <laughs> I'll make sure not to include metaphors or big words so they don't feel overwhelmed and confused. The fifth thing thing coming soon. Oh, okay, that's her fifth album. I, I assume she's dropping an album soon. She's heating it up. Then she said, and how could I forget my baby right through me? And by the way, if you don't have to write or do the work, you still get the respect and accolades. I commend you. Laugh out loud. <laughs> how, how would she laugh? <laughs> I wish I did that same thing now. That I see the hard work I put in didn't even matter. It's really all love. This is her replying to Hip Hop DX. Then, uh... Okay, so I don't know if this is her writing to Hip Hop DX or Hip Hop DX writing to her, but it says, my dude, oh no, this has to be, <laughs> this has to be Nikki. Uh, my dude said, you know who another rapper is based off of, even though she didn't write it. So compare that to my debut album that I wrote, don't have selective amnesia or hold me to a higher standard while disrespecting me in my craft. Goodbye. Then she keeps going. She comes back. I'm the best, here I am, save me, dear old Nikki. But all of a sudden a ghost written song drop and you no longer know who I am, knock it off my dude. Of course she's saying that word, but I'm, I don't say that word. Then she said, does Jay need to tell you he sold drugs in front of Marcy Projects on every album? For you to know who he is? Like do people even understand anymore how dumb you all sound? Like just stop. That's how she would say it. Now, there's this complex with some, you know, I don't know, you know, I think people do take Nicki Minaj serious. She's just letting the trolls get to her because honestly, I don't think anybody's questioning Nicki Minaj's pen, okay? Nah. Uh, the only people that are questioning it are people that are trying to bother her and she's letting them bother her. Let's just be honest, man. And I'm sick of the victim thing, man. I like Nikki a lot, man. The girl is talented, but you know, it's just too much, man. You know, like just just let your work speak for itself. You got to, you got five, you're going on your fifth album. You get tons of features. If you let stuff like this bother you, you don't truly believe in yourself. And that's all I'm saying. She should believe in herself. And I mean this from like, I mean this coming from like, 
love, you know? Like, I know she's talented. Everybody knows she's talented. But there's people that want to drag her down. And when you keep responding to the noise, you can't focus, you know? That's all they're trying to do. Trying to get Meg Thee Stallion and Cardi B, push Nicki out. Nicki's just going to be an icon now. That's what... They do that, man. And you know what? I'm going to tell you, like, Nikki is getting pushed out. That's what's happening. And she's letting it happen by responding to the noise, okay? Then we got uh, some negative news, okay? I got to report this. Uh, so her boyfriend, Kenneth Petty, he has a, you know, he has a colored past. Uh, I mean, he took someone's life and went to jail for it. So he's a felon. Okay, but I'm glad Nikki's happy. Hey, everybody's happy that Nikki's happy. Okay, hey, happiness is key to life. Okay, it's not all about money. Money can't make you happy. You still gotta, you know, with your heart. You know, you gotta, you gotta feel happiness within your heart. Well, he was caught on live with a weapon in his pants. This is where Instagram can even get people in trouble that are famous. Well, it usually gets people that are famous, but I'm talking about even the people on the rise usually get picked off first. You got to be careful what you're putting on the live. You got to be careful, man, because they're going to investigate that. And I, it, I'm not the first one to report that. I, I wouldn't have reported this unless it was viral already. It's viral, you know? So, like, it's out there. Uh, if you go to mediatakeout.com or something like that, they'll have a picture of it. I'm not going to put it on here. Um, but anyways... I hope they work that out because she seems she does seem happy. Hey, she might not be the best guy. It might not be the best guy for her. He might get her in trouble. Who knows? Okay, but it's not up for us to decide. It's up for her. It's her life. It's her life. Okay, and I'm not defending her in any way. I'm just saying this, that's a fact. I can't tell you what to do with your life, and I can't tell her what to do with her life. You can have an opinion. That's it. You know. So next up, that didn't go over. Okay, so let's just get right into. The Mac Miller case. So Mac Miller is, uh, unfortunately, he passed, you know, and the, the guy who gave him the, you know, the drugs to get to the, that he took his life with. Um, now, the, let's let's be clear. He didn't know he didn't mean to take his life. This guy laced that he had laced substance. OK. This is why, and yes, he can be in trouble because he's not the FDA, he's not a doctor, he's not the pharmacy. And if they could trace it to you, you're going to go down. And now the United States is has a case against him. Now there's leaked text messages, and I will read them, between him and this guy. Uh, they obtained Mac Miller's phone. And it says, uh, McCormick, uh, are you close to the cribbo? Of course, this is, McCormick is Mac Miller. Johansson said, huh? I'm at the house. What's up, hun? Uh, Cam, just work another 30. I'm out, love. Okay, I don't know what that means. Oh, oh, I eat petite. So it's like a group text, okay? Between all these guys. So Johansson must be the girl. Okay, so uh, Johansson says, Do you want me to see if my other boy can come? Now are you waiting for Cameron? McCormick says, This is, uh, again, remember, McCormick is Mac Miller. Okay, says, See what the deal with him is. Just need a quick G. She says, Okay. McCormick says, Muchos gracias. Anything? She says, No, hon, sorry. Then McCormick says, All good, I can wait on Cam. All right. Then it goes back to more text messages. McCormick, yo, Petite. This Petite's the guy, that the, the dealer that's under suspicion. Yo, what's up, man? McCormick says, did you hear back, uh, did, did you hear back about Addy? Petite. Oh, oh, that's what McCormick said. Petite says, nah, I couldn't find any. Oh, I guess Adderall. Then uh, McCormick says, all good. You don't have any uh, lean? Uh, yeah, perks. And then Petite says, I got some dil diluated twos dialogue. i don't know what that means is that's about it i could get yellows and blues though mccormick said blues as far as perks he said yeah 30s mccormick says these those are my ish mccormick says when can you get them oh that, that's my yeah. then petite says probably an hour or two uh they're 30 eh 
estimated arrival. Okay, so it's McCormick says, any chance I could get 10 of those and 10 bars in a bottle? Petit says, yeah, for sure. I'll be back when I get uh, when I pick them up. Uh, then Magnolia says, for sure. Could you actually drop at the studio? Petit says, yeah, where at? He said, I'm at Conway. Let me send you the address. Then he sends the address. Is that far from you? No, not too far. I can make it. Then uh, Magnolia says, okay, word. Let me know on the way. He says, okay, I will. Cormac says, what time are you thinking? I said, probably one. Magnolia says, that's the, for the blues too, right? Could I come through with one earlier? He says, yeah, that's all for it. I'm going to go pick him up right now. Then he says, actually, I can wait. Beautiful. Okay, sweet. Yeah, and then it goes on uh, with him between the girl. She says, you know, Mac Miller says, I need a few things. She says, I have everything. Uh, then he says, no, I need snow blowers and blue quirks. She says, I have it all. Do you have the lean too? She says, no lean, but Adderall too. I have ox. He says, perks? Damn. Oh, man. It's so sad, man. So it, it, the whole text message is just out there. Basically, uh, him getting the the drugs and how much it costs. Total $1,000 worth of pills. Okay. Uh, sad, man. Mac Miller had a lot of demons he was dealing with. And uh, it's very sad that uh, this happened to him, man. We, you know, he was a... Seemed like a great kid, man. I, I I only talked to him maybe once on on Twitter or something. But he seems so positive. I mean, he is positive. It's just that he had his own demons he was dealing with. You know, I, I you know, I guess I can only relate it to my demons. My demon is food or something like that. You know, like I'm always on a diet. You know, because like I have a weakness for food. So I guess I could relate it to that. You know, and they, it's sad, man. Um, that. Things can grab a hold of us as human beings, you know? It's very sad. And and any one of these could take, food could take my life, you know? If I, if I were to go crazy and lose control and be on 600-pound life. <laughs> but, um, you know, rest in peace, Meg Miller, and to his family and everything. And, you know, hopefully they get some justice out of this. Uh, the guy seemed like a weirdo. Because remember, he did an interview right after this. He, he, he snitched on himself on TMZ. He said, yeah, I did it. I gave him the stuff. It's like, wow, bro. You are on TMZ and you snitched on yourself. <laughs> Idiots. Anyways, I wish Mac Miller was still here, man. But um, this is Jordan Tower with JT News. Positive vibes, guys. I hope, don't let that bring you down. Live your best life out here. Love you guys. Peace.